May 4th, 2024. If it's 7 o'clock on Saturday morning, it's time for This Week in Waukesha. I'm your host, the unsinkable Don Brown, coming to you live and local from the office of former Alderman Don Paul Brown here in the WAUK studios in downtown Waukesha, right around the corner from Theodore Yalman's Park, where we are proud to honor our suffragette heritage here in this Shaw. I am reunited for just one day, and, and it feels so good, with my old friend, uh, my my old young friend, Calvin, uh, producing. Calvin, uh, I'm proud to say, cut his teeth here on This Week in Waukesha. Calvin, how are you, by the way? You know, I'm I'm doing pretty good. This is earlier than I have to get up for my shows during the week. That's right. Yes, and, and that's what I want to say. Calvin's, uh, as we... To use a baseball term, he's up in the show. He's producing big time shows like uh, Earl Ingram from eight to ten Monday through Friday, and then also Matt Nair on air, right? With Jane Matt Nair and Greg Bach, is that correct, Calvin? Did I get that right? Yep, that's right. So you you are you know talk about star power. So that's this is really the uh, the uh, what do we say the the bell of the ball, my good friend Calvin. Really great to have you back here uh, for the day. It's the first day of the Waukesha Farmers Market, and we could not have asked for nicer weather. It's sunny out there. It's, I, I'm, I'm guessing it's in the 60s or 50s, you know, good, you know, morning weather. And um, it's also May the 4th, so May the 4th be with you, and we'll be talking more about that later. Um, the topic, the prime topic of today's show is that uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And normally I have um, my good friend Mary Madden, Executive Director for NAMI on, and, and we still may have someone from NAMI on during the month. They had their big fundraiser last night, so I thought it'd be... I'm sure they all want the morning off. <laughs> they work very hard for those uh, um, those events and for a wonderful cause. Um, but we're also going to talk about some, uh, what should we say here? Um, a lot of good, um, a very packed agenda, shall we say. We're going to talk about, uh, again, opening day of Farmer's Market and um, the uh, Civic Media Crop Report. Yes, we have one. We're going to be talking local sports, local news, local culture, including a punk rock music festival at Waukesha South Auditorium last night um, that I got to check out, and uh, and so much more. Calvin, do you like punk mu- punk rock? I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm a huge fan, but there's definitely songs that I've heard that are popular that I enjoy. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, this was fun. There was actually a ma- a, a, a mosh pit, you know, in a high school auditorium. Who would have thunk it, you know? So, but uh, anyway. Again, as I mentioned, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and my guests today are dedicated professionals in this space. My first guest here is Mr. Jesus Ramirez of Trilogy Health Group uh, uh, here in Waukesha, and also in the same building as the new NAMI headquarters. As many of you know, WAUK, where we are, is the old NAMI building. So, But uh, Jesus, how are you today? I am living the dream. Can't Love complain. It. The, the, the sun's shining, the birds are chirping, <laughs> and uh, you know I'm still here, so I'm thing. blessed and I'm grateful. Sounds great. So we'll be talking about his uh, unique uh, clinic practice, if you will. And then this, and you're the director of operations for that clinic. And then in the second hour, we have doctors um, Kelly Piazic and, and Brian May. Uh, Kelly's the executive vice president of research um, for Rogers Behavioral Health. And, and Brian is the chief strategy officer for uh, Rogers as well. And, uh, you know, for many of you who don't know, Rogers is one of the leading uh, really one of the elite um, behavioral and mental health um, hospitals uh, in the nation. And they've got facilities all over the country. But, of mm-hmm. course, the mothership is here in yes. the main Oconomowoc uh, practice. And um, I want to just come right out and say, uh, for those of you, <laughs> we're, not, we're not taking any calls about Kelly's role on the school board. She's here on behalf of her employer, Rogers Behavioral Health. And since the focus is on mental health awareness, I want to um, – well, I'm going to share with you some stats. But – Kelly has agreed on a future show, um, you know, to have a conversation about uh, our schools uh, in any capacity, and especially as it relates to students' mental health. And so that's something uh, to be continued. So you know, definitely put a pin in that. We're not ducking anything here. But, again, I want to focus on behavioral health and mental health because it's obviously something very personal to me and my family experience. But uh, here is some data from the Mental Health Association um, that I think will be staggering to many of you. 21% of adults are experiencing uh, a mental illness. Uh, that's equivalent to over 50 million Americans. 55% adults with a mental illness receive no treatment. That's over 28 million individuals. 
Sixteen percent of youth reporting report suffering from at least one major depressive episode in the past year. More than two point seven million youth are experiencing se- severe major depression, and I'm I'm willing to bet, Jesus, as I bet you are, that uh, that's those reporting. There's, there may be very well be so many more. Oh, definitely, definitely. So, um, and <laughs> yeah, uh, so we that's why we st- kind of started the the business um, is to kind of help. Uh, the community in, in at Waukesha and beyond to have access to that type of of healthcare and mental health care, and um, and we're glad to offer it. Um, we opened up in uh, April of 2022, and it's been a fun ride getting to meet the people, watching them progress mentally uh, uh, and spiritually, if you sure, will, as sure. well. Um, and I've become very close friends with some of our patients, and they'll come in and they. They drop off cookies and things of that nature. So they really appreciate what we do for them. And we try to go uh, all out and, and and help as much as we can and and definitely try to accommodate even those people that don't have health care um, uh, and make it affordable for them. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, to finish up my, my data from uh, the Mental Health Association, 60% of youth with major depression do not receive mental health treatment. One in 10 youth with private health insurance do not have mental health coverage. There is nationally one mental health provider for every 350 citizens. Mm. And um, now the good news from this report is a 2023 report from the uh, MHA, Mental Health Association, is that Wisconsin ranks number one in the nation with the lowest number of mental health cases and having the highest access to care. So, you know, pretty nice feather in the cap, but that's not to say that we still don't have an issue with mental health here in Wisconsin as we do nationally. Oh yeah. And all over the world, you know, and it's, it's sometimes for people, I think it it may be hard to admit that they have a mental health problem. Um, and you know, unfortunately internalize that and later on in life could result in some very, you know, potential issues. Uh, and so, you know, we want to try to mitigate that and, and help as much as possible. Sounds good. So tell us really quick about, or not really quick, take a, tell us about Trilogy Health. Like what are some of your unique offerings? Yeah. So Trilogy Health Group, uh, again, uh, primarily it's a psychiatric facility. Uh, our psychiatric nurse practitioners um, that we have uh, who are being, who's being supervised by a, a MD, um, they offer uh, psychotherapy. Uh, they prescribe meds. Uh, we, you know, have... They specialize in a different range of disorders, uh, ADHD, depression, things of that nature. Um, but also we, we offer for major depression, depression uh, we offer a really cool new, uh, not new, but kind of uh, cutting edge uh, medication called Spravato or esketamine, which is a nasal, uh, nasal spray that uh, you can take. Um, and it really is supposed to help um, with depression. And we've seen a lot of um, cases where clients come in, they start treatment, and then you can see the progression uh, as the treatments uh, continue, um, which is typically a month or more. Uh, And so it's been really cool that we became um, certified for that and are able to offer that because a lot of people don't know about it and don't know that how much it could help their life. And I've seen patients that literally said, you guys have saved my life. So it's amazing. Sure, sure. You know, when, when there's one wrinkle of mental health and behavioral health that oftentimes is overlooked, and, and that's also um, a treatment for drug addiction. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we offer that as well. Yeah, we definitely have nurse practi- psychiatric nurse practitioners who um, uh, have uh, come from addiction, the addiction background. And so we're able to offer those services. And then we also work with Rogers Behavioral Health um, to uh, help facilitate that. So if we feel that patients need a higher level of care, you know, we'll send them to Rogers and then in turn, Rogers will send us their patients, uh, who have, you know, exited the, um, residential community and back out into the world. And then we'll see them for outpatient treatment. Okay. That's terrific. That's, and again, that's gotta be something your clinic must be very proud of to have that kind of partnership. Yeah. Yeah. And not only with Rogers, but with many of the other, uh, behavioral health hospitals around here, you know, um, so we've had the opportunity to meet a lot of them, and um, but we've been working very closely with Rogers, and it's been a, it's been a fun, fun uh, experience. And I, they gave me a tour of their campus; it was awesome. So, yeah, Terrific. amazing thing. Good deal. So that's yeah, that means a lot. And um, 
<clears throat> if I could pause for a quick second here, as I mentioned, it's opening day for Waukesha Farmers Market. Our booth will not be set up until May 18th, but um, we are we are taking your calls on the Civic Media app. That's right. Download the Civic Media app, and then you can call in. And that um, and that way, too, especially if you're going to the Farmers Market, you can catch This Week in Waukesha as you enjoy what's going on. And I'm hoping I can get some calls for anybody shopping there because we'd love to hear what's uh, what's going on and what, what we can look forward to um, today and in the coming weeks. And then I also, if you recall from last year, you know, Johnny Watermelon, who's been uh, producing our show, um, he ran our booth at the farmer's market and he used to call in with what we jokingly called the crop report. Mm -hmm. And he would include some of the the vendors in his call and then what are some of the exciting offerings. And um, did you know that WAUK and Civic Media has a real crop report now? Our very own Pam Yankee broadcasts every morning at 5 a.m., Monday through Friday, Pam is the director of the Midwest Farm Report out of Madison and um, highly recommend it. Uh, it's even if you're not a farmer, there's just some great uh, trends that you should be aware of. And um, I, and I think that's just a really neat offering that we have. So, um, but um, continuing our conversation with Jesus Ramirez, you know, for those of you who, for those many of us who have not um, received, you know, see, um, sought mental health uh, treatment of any kind, you know, what are some telltale signs that someone could use from someone you love or perhaps yourself? Um, and, and, you know, what, what is it you can do to kind of alleviate anxieties people have about, um, you know, pursuing? Because there's still a stigma out there, unfortunately, tragically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. In spite of all that, you know, we've come so far in many years. Of course. Yeah, there's definitely a stigma. Um, and and a lot of people, I, I like I was saying earlier, we were talking prior to the show, is that maybe they don't have... Uh, they feel weird of accepting or saying that they need help, you know, uh, mentally. And so um, we just want to kind of break that stigma. And, you know, we're at the type of clinic where people come in and they feel, you know, comfortable. That's great. The conversation continues with Jesus Ramirez here from Trilogy uh, Health Group here on This Week in Waukesha. Don't go away. Give it up. <laughs> Share it. Listening to this week in Waukesha, and as many of you regular listeners know, our, our second song in the first hour comes from our favorite son, Les Paul, with Mary Ford. And the world is waiting for the sunrise. We don't have to wait. Uh, it's been a beautiful sunny morning, has been for um, quite some time, and um, could not be more grateful. So much going on today, and if you love baseball as much as I do, the beloved, our beloved Black Shirts of Waukesha South. Play a doubleheader against McGuanago at 1 o'clock today at Frame Park. And yours truly will be doing the PA uh, broadcast, if you will, for Game 2. So stop by. It's a beautiful day for some rounders. And uh, I want to wish the North Stars luck as they played Oconomowoc this morning. The North Stars are looking to shake a two-game losing streak after a, a tough 4-1 to loss to Muskego um, last Monday. And a um, it's actually, I'm sorry, a three-game losing streak because they've lost twice to Muskego. They lost the previous Friday. And then a 2-1 to loss to Muck uh, on Wednesday. That being said, the North Stars are 8-4 and four this year with uh, big wins against a uh, fourth-ranked Arrowhead that's fourth in the state and another top-ranked team, Sussex Hamilton. So um, best of luck to Don Radomski and his uh, North Stars uh, for continuing success. It's really been a, a fun story to follow, a great team out there. And... Um, Waukesha North women's softball team beat the the black shirts in softball on Tuesday uh, at South nine to three. South did manage to win handily uh, against Milwaukee Lutheran last night at South. When I was leaving, the score was seventeen to two late in the game. And um, North softball is having a great year. You could say they're kind of the the darlings, much like their baseball counterparts are. But uh, Hats off to South because they are heading in a much new direction and um, uh, not quite where they are with Jimmy Meller's uh, North Star softball team doing really well. Uh, but 
the goal for this year's softball team under coach Mario Nudi was to have at least one game that was not run ruled. That was going to be kind of their goal for success, but they've won quite a few games this year, including a come from behind victory against Waukesha West. They were trailing nine to three. This is a couple weeks back. They ended up winning uh, 10 to nine, 11 to nine, but that was just an amazing, especially in a conference game like that. And against a you know bitter crosstown rival, uh, but they've also they've cashed in maybe close to four or five six wins. I'm trying to get a re- a report on that. Uh, but um, again, it's a lot of exciting developments. Really excited to have Coach uh, Coach Mario um, with the softball program and moving us in the right direction. And um, you know, I know I like to focus things on Waukesha, but um, today and tomorrow at 12:45, our beloved Milwaukee Brewers are. Um, Heading down to the friendly confines to face their old manager, uh, Craig Council. It's already always a big deal when the Brewers play the Cubs. Oh yeah, uh, but now with uh, Mr. Council there, I'm sure it should be even more interesting uh, down there. So best of luck to Brewers. And um, again, if you download the Civic Media app, you can have the best of all worlds uh, taking the Brewers game with you uh, to um, to watch the Black Shirts at Frame Park today, or. If tennis is your thing, uh, at Carroll University is host, hosting the CCIW um, tennis tournament um, today. It was yesterday and today, so lots to do here sports-wise. And uh, speaking of Carroll, in this Carroll Minute, uh, out of Naperville, Illinois, the College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin, CCIW released its annual women's lacrosse all-conference team uh, on Tuesday with four Carroll players earning a spot on the all-CCIW first team. Uh, doing the honors for the Pioneers are freshman sensation Elizabeth Wang, sophomore um, Samantha Hurd, junior Grace Tumulty, uh, and senior Ariana Collum. Tumulty was also named CCIW Defensive Player of the Year, while senior Zoe Esvelt was named um, Carroll CCIW Respect Award representative. So collectively, these, these players have helped uh, the Pioneers to a 14-3 and overall record this year which marks the most single season victories in program history. So uh, congrats to them and just all the success that the Carroll women's athletics programs has had. You've, you've heard in the show about uh, what a great season the, uh, the basketball team had under Lindsay Schultz uh, winning the CCIW uh, championship and, uh, and so much more, but so looking forward to hearing more great things uh, from our university partners there. So, uh, continuing our conversation with Jesus Ramirez of Trilogy Health Group. Um, so we were talking about access to care in, in terms of these invisible barriers that people have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and again, being Irish, there's an old adage, if the, if you're not bleeding, there's nothing wrong with you. Sure. And it's it, that's just such a huge mm-hmm. mistake that many individuals and families make. And so yeah. you know, what, what recommendations do you have for those people that are considering getting health or, or maybe not even aware that they, they have a, a, a mental health or behavioral health issue? Yeah, uh, I would definitely just say follow your instincts. Uh, If you feel that you are starting to isolate or you're feeling uh, anxious uh, for no reason, uh, definitely try to seek help and figure out what the root of the problem is because usually there's something underneath uh, an underlying barrier that is kind of, you know, making it hard to live a normal, healthy life. Um, And so, you know, we offer that. And along with mental health care, uh, it comes kind of the, the beauty aspect of it as well, where people feel good about themselves. Uh, they start to feel better. They look better. And we're also able to offer them, you know, medical cosmetics, you know, Botox, um, uh, testosterone injections for men, lip fillers for women, um, uh, and uh, some aglutide, trisepatide, uh, you know, that could be used for all kinds of things, uh, weight loss, things of that nature. So um, a lot of happy clients, a lot of happy patients, um, and we're really excited to be able to help the community uh, and beyond. You know, the goal is here, the goal here is for um, a Trilogy Health Group to uh, provide access to people with no health care, definitely not waiting six to nine months, you know, and we'll try to accommodate uh, all as any budget, you know, so people can sure. have access to that. Yeah. yeah. So here's a question I have as someone who's my family's kind of lived through um, a mental health journey with a loved one. And sure. um, yeah. I, this I have to. This may be the first kind of practice I've heard of that's that's added these, um, you know, we want to say aesthetic treatments or Botox or that. Mm-hmm. And and um, does that sound kind of paradoxical to 
you know, um, giving someone good mental health therapy or is it a com- it must be a compliment if that's something you offer. How did that come about? Yeah. So um, what came about it was that uh, a lot of our patients, um, you know, just weren't weren't feeling right about themselves physically. And, you know, how do we how do we overcome that to make to help these patients feel better about themselves and um, to be able to offer these products has really, you know, all in one space. Uh, has really, uh, you know, increased our our patient base and has made our patients very happy to be able to have access to that. Um, you know, and in the coming months, you know, we're going to be offering uh, TMS uh, as well. So, what's TMS again? I'm sorry. A TMS is is uh is where they is where they put like a electrodes on your brain and they mm-hmm. kind of map out your brain. Oh. Uh, and they can determine you know um, major depressive disorders. Uh, and interesting. And kind of help with that, yeah. So we'll, yeah. we'll be able to offer that, and it's, it's like I said, it's been an amazing journey uh, to be able to meet the patients, to meet the people of Waukesha, and to be able to help them and see their progression is amazing. That's terrific. We continue this conversation with Jesus Ramirez of Tr- Trinity uh, Trilogy Health Group, mm-hmm. and uh, this as we begin the Mental Health Awareness Month, and then also we're going to talk about May the Fourth be with you and uh, what you're doing uh, to recognize this day. Here on This Week in Waukesha, WUK 540 AM, 101.1 FM, The Show. The world is waiting for the sunrise. Every little rosebud is covered with you. And my heart is calling for you to thrush on ice. It's TV. Six inches. I know because I'm going to be out there making it with my snow guns. I need a drink. <laughs> okay. And this one's on Nick Winters, if you would, Herbert. Thank you. Well, great. There you have it. Hey, everybody, snow tomorrow, but let's all think powder and lots of it, please. <laughs> Who's a powder animal? Everybody, all right. Okay, Polly, you ready to play a little bit of music? No. Now, wait. <laughs> this is the Nick Winters show, and I do the entertaining. Thank you. <laughs> let's go out with something really hot for these folks. A big hit out of 77. A Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars, give me the Star Wars, don't let them end. Ah, Star Wars, if they should bar wars, please let these Star Wars stay. And hey. How about that nutty Star Wars bar? Can you forget all the creatures in there? And hey, Darth Vader in that black and evil mask, did he scare you as much as he scared me? Ah! Star Wars goes near it. Star Wars, my seventh winner up here. Star Wars. Good morning. For those of you just tuning in, you're listening to This Week in Waukesha. I'm your host, Don Brown, and reunited, and it feels so good for one day with my good friend Calvin uh, on the board. And uh, you can catch Calvin during the week on Earl Ingram and Matt and Aaron Air that go from 8 to 10, 10 to 12, respectively. And yes, it is May the 4th, and may the 4th be with you. And I, I couldn't think of any better way to celebrate than with uh, Bill Murray's uh, Nick Winters nightclub uh, singer uh, and star and um, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> There, and there are a couple of those different clips and uh, different venues. That one happens to be a ski lodge and uh, very funny. And uh, yes, you know, Darth Vader scared me a lot. And um, I think, wasn't he here at the County Expo this week? Oh, forget that. No, let's move on. Sorry, only kidding. <laughs> hey, um, what are you doing anything for May the 4th be with you today, Jesus? Just kind of relaxing, man. Kind of yeah. relaxing, enjoying the sunshine, doing some yard work. Sure. Just kind of hanging with the family, yeah. How about you, Calvin? Anything special for May the 4th be with you? A little Star Wars movie festival or... Uh... Anything, or are you, are you not a Star Wars guy? Um, I, I, I like Star Wars. You know, I hadn't really thought about it, but, sure. you know, maybe I'll dive into one of the shows I haven't seen yet. There you go. There you go. And, uh, hey, if you're doing anything special, or if there's anything special going on in Waukesha that I don't know about, we don't know about, excuse me, uh, call us using the Civic Media app. Uh, yes, we are Radio 101.1 FM, 540 AM, but do yourself a favor. Download the app if you haven't already so you can take this show and so many other great uh 
programming um, opportunities that we have here at, uh, throughout Civic Media. And you can also take it with you when you travel. I know a lot of you have um, vacation places up north, hunting places if not. And uh, we have over 20 stations uh, throughout the state in 12 different markets. So really great opportunity to take um, local news, local sports, all the things that are important to you uh, on the road as you travel. So, but, um, you know, I, we uh, at Civic Media actually uh, have what I like to call Master Luke, Luke Mathers, our executive produce, uh, producer. Um, not that he's a master and we're slaves, but he's a master at his craft. And um, Luke uh, sends out these weekly reports for the, the different show hosts with some really great nuggets of information to share. And um, one thing I'm really grateful for and regret that I didn't know about it sooner is early May is typically National Small Business Week. Uh, as honored by the Better Business Bureau. And um, if you check out the Better Business Bureau website, there are some great small business tips and a lot of other great small business resources for small business owners out there, and many of us are, uh, to check out, um, as well as for us as consumers uh, to take advantage of the small business opportunities. But going back to small business tips, here's mine. Advertise on WAUK and Civic Media. It really gives you really great access to a lot of Engage listeners, uh, people with, um, shall we say, some uh, that are interested in supporting local business for one and, and to have that disposable income. And, um, you know, with things like Mother's Day coming up and other, you know, a, a graduation and all that, it's so great when you can shop locally. I, I know my wife gets a lot on Amazon and there certainly makes a lot of sense. She's a very professional, very busy professional and mother and, and uh, thank God for those home delivery services. Uh, there are small businesses that do home delivery, but it is also nice to get uh, get out there and support a local business uh, um, in person. And this also came in from Luke Mathers uh, from the same data is that 45% of all Americans prefer in-store shopping. And I know I do too, especially when I can go uh, shopping down here on Main Street or some of the other, like down where you are in Grandview, Jesus, there's, there's probably some really interesting concepts. Um, so you owe it to yourself. Uh, to find some great things that, you know, people can't get anywhere else. And yes, maybe you spend a few dollars, but those dollars recirculate back into the local economy. They help sponsor clubs, teams, um, or are, are purchased at other retailers or um, commercial uh, business entities. So thank you, Luke, for, for sharing that. And um, I mean, would you consider Trilogy Health a small business, Jesus? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um uh, but it, you know, it's, it's a business where it's, it's, it's very needed. And, um, luckily we have the opportunity to, um, provide that, uh, to Waukesha and, uh, and beyond. Um, uh, and so, like I said, we are extremely blessed to be here. Um, we're grateful and, um, uh, you know, we owe it to, uh, everything to our patients and we keep them, you know, top of mind. Sure. Sure. I like that. I like yeah. that. So and um, and you you impress me as someone, and you live here in Waukesha. You mentioned in Pebble Valley, mm -hmm. you impress me as someone that also supports um, you know local and small businesses. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I try to shop local as much as I can uh, because I know the importance and the value of that, um, and and supporting the community where you live and, and and trying to help out in any way you can is is uh, you know very important. Yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. You know, speaking about close to you is there. We, my wife and I, we got carry out one night from a Thai place. I want to say it's like mom's kitchen or something. Mama something's kitchen. It's good. I like that place. But the yeah. in, inside looks like, like th that would be a great date night place to have dinner. Like even sitting at the bar is really neat, but they have tables. It's a really nice, it's a very nice scene. Yeah. Um, for, you know, I guess you'd say a smaller venue for a restaurant. Yeah. It's really good too. I've had their, uh, I recommend the drunken noodles. If you're listening out there, the very good choice. Uh, I recommend it for sure. And I recommend the Pad CU with tofu. Now, mind you, I'm a huge carnivore. I love red meat. I had a couple brats for dinner last night, but yum. Something about Pad CU with tofu that may very well be my favorite Thai dish. If maybe my favorite overall like Asian dish. And wow. um, and it, that what's it? Is it Mom's Kitchen or Mama? There's a name for it. Something Kitchen. Yeah, it, it, I think you're right. I think it's called Mom's Kitchen. I think it's just Mom's Kitchen. It's mm -hmm. a Thai place, but. They do a great job with that. Yeah, right around the corner from Trilogy Health Group there on Silvernail. So there you go, yeah. walking distance. You know, yeah. you know, come get a you know come get a session with uh, Jesus's team, and um, head on over for some Mom's Kitchen. That's right. Drunken noodles or some. They are open for lunch, as far as we know. 
as far as we would be. Yeah, Mm -hmm. sure. That that seems like that would be a pretty crowded place at lunchtime with all the businesses nearby. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. We've, we've carried it. We've carried out from there uh, on a number of occasions. So terrific, terrific. So I uh, was checking out some of your reviews on Google and they, they mentioned a couple other members that they mentioned you, Mm -hmm. but they also mentioned, uh, other members of the team. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And- Lisa, Lisa, who's the, the owner, she's the primary uh, psychiatric nurse practitioner. Um, and then we have uh, Maggie, who's also a psychiatric nurse practitioner. Uh, she comes from addiction uh, as well. And so does uh, Lisa. Uh, and then we have Deanne, who does, um, you know, general care, the health, the, the general health, uh, cold, flu, you know, things of that nature. And as well as the you know, the Botox, the, uh, you know, lip filler injections, testosterone, things of that nature. Uh, and, you know, helps collaborate with, uh, the, the, the rest of the team. And it's been a great so far. It's been a great team effort sure. and we're excited. Sure. Tell us your address again. You're on Grandview. Yeah. 2717 North Grandview Boulevard, suite 103, uh, right in Waukesha, Wisconsin, 53188. Um, uh, definitely go to our website. You can find out all about, Trilogy Health Group uh, at www.trilogyhealthgroup.com um, or don't hesitate to call the office and inquire uh, 262-565-6202. Fantastic. Thanks, Dave. We may have you repeat that again before uh, the hour is out, Jesus. No problem at all. Love it. And um, you mentioned, uh, it might have been Maggie, that she had a, a journey with addiction or mental health you had mentioned. Yeah, yeah. That right? yeah. yeah. So, so she comes from the addiction background and we're happy to you know, um, uh, provide those services to people who, you know, may have an addiction problem. Sure. And, um, you know, if we feel that, uh, a higher level level of care uh, is appropriate is when will we, we will yeah. send them to sure. more of an inpatient yeah. setting. You know, I, I mentioned about Maggie, just, um, again, not to pick on her, but there are mm-hmm. many professionals I've met that, um, had an experience with behavioral or mental health or, or addiction health mm-hmm. and, uh, got the care that they needed and, and, became champions or became, um, advocates and well, professional, um, care providers in that space. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really cool to see. Um, and you know, to be able to be a part of that is, is an amazing thing. So we're real happy. Sure. That's terrific. What inspired you, if I may ask to, to, um, to go into mental and behavioral health? Yeah. So for me, it's personal. Um, you know, I, I have, I'm not afraid to admit, you know, I, I have had some addiction, um, you know, a past the addiction past that is definitely there for me, uh, as well as uh, the mental uh, health depression part of it, because that, you know, goes hand in hand. And so it became very personal for me, um, because in 2018, I was diagnosed with necrotizing pancreatitis, which is, a, if you drink a lot that can happen. And I had 17 surgeries spent, you know, eight months at UW Madison and really got to know what it was like to be severely, severely depressed, uh, and needed to, and I needed to change. And so, you know, I got the help that I needed. Um, and now my outlook on life is totally different. I'm, you know, sober and it's, it's a great feeling to be able to have, um, a provider or providers who can help with that. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're happy to help and, you know, we don't judge anybody and we're, we're just really excited to be honest with you. Yeah. I love it. You know, and I'm, I'm really grateful to you for mentioning that, um, you had, you know, that you had a battle with, uh, with depression and mm-hmm. it's something that I, I think those that aren't familiar with it, they struggle with understanding it. That, um, it's very hard, very hard to overcome. It really, it, it is a, and again, I know this from my own family's experience that it, that's a kind of pain. And fortunately for me, I've only had to experience minor episodes of it, but sure. even those minor episodes, there is an excruciating pain that you're feeling that really feels physical. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like you and, need it. But the thing that you have to remember is that it's kind of, it's just temporary, you know? Yeah. And that's good to know. And like I said, for these well-documented, um, I should we say celebrity, you know, that mm-hmm. lost their battle with mental health, you yeah. think right away, Robin Williams, I think of Anthony Bourdain and, um, that again, that pain is just so excruciating that for many people, they feel that that's, you know, um, ending your life is, is really the only kind of, um, cure or panacea. And it's, it's just sad. Uh, again, knowing those, and it, and it oftentimes affects people that are very acutely intelligent or highly 
there are high the instances are higher for those types of individuals. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, awareness is so important. So we can, you know, kind of get out in, in front of people um, early on. Um, so would, would you mind opening the door there for my, my next guest? Hey, Zeus. For sure, you got Thanks, it. you got it. Yeah. That's Kelly. So but yeah, she's here a little early. That's great. My, my guest in the next hour. So, but um, I can't tell you what's just what a beautiful day it is. Nice weather. And uh, we, we do continue the conversation with... Uh, um, yeah, so so Brian Kay and Kelly Piazic from Rogers Behavioral Health have just walked in, so they're our guests in the next hour. And uh, Jesus, thanks so much for doing that, my friend. So I owe you so much more. You're very welcome. So, Not a yeah, problem at all. So yeah, it's probably good because you said you do have some um, some relationships there at Rogers. Yes, that yes, refer, we do. That you refer patients to, and they refer back to you. So yeah, so most be, definitely. It's be a nice introduction for you. When yeah, you meet up uh, Brian and Kelly for sure. So terrific. So. We're going to continue this conversation with um, Jesus Ramirez, uh, Ramirez, excuse me, of Trilogy Health Group, uh, plus um, some Mother's Day reminders. It's only a week away. Uh, some other local business news, and um, so much more here on this week in Waukesha on WAUK five forty AM one hundred one point one FM. And don't forget to download the uh, Civic Media app, and also. Um, Tyler Pudliner of Bobbleheads bring us together as my guest on. Um, Saturday, May 25th, to talk about Friday Night Live, where he'll be exhibiting for the first time for his charity. So exciting. How about that nutty Star Wars bar? Can you forget all the creatures in there? And hey, Darth Vader in that black and evil mask, did he scare you as much as he scared me? Ah, Star Wars! You're listening to This Week in Waukesha on Saturday, May the 4th. Be with you. Opening day of Farmer's Market. And um, one of my favorites, Sinead O'Connor with a, a rare ditty, uh, This Is to Mother You. Uh, beautiful song, like so many that she had put out in her, her life. And that's also a friendly reminder to all those uh, husbands and, and children and grandchildren. Mother's Day is but a week away. And if you check out our Farmer's Market uh, today or next Saturday, there may be some great little trinkets. It's uh, There's obviously a lot of great produce and things and flowers, so those are nice. So keep the farmer's market in mind for that next week. But also um, some really neat jewelry and other great um, gifts. And, of course, um, very proud of our Main Street and the many different offerings they have for mom, as well as the other great uh, business districts throughout Waukesha that have some uh, some nice things. And, and, and when in doubt, gift cards. You know, all the great restaurants that we have here and other clubs. And, um, and Hey, if you want to do a shout out to your mother on mother's day, call into the show, uh, this week in Waukesha next Saturday. And again, download the civic media app cause you can call the show directly from the app. It works really well. And, um, you know, nice little early mother's day gift for mom. I'd, I'd certainly like to, to call her out and, uh, her, you can have her call in. So, um, uh, lots of fun we can have on the radio. So, and, Yo, know, Jesus, you're, you you impressed me as a as a young professional, and um, I'd be interested in knowing for you what what has radio meant in in your life. You know, radio has been radio has been uh, a huge a huge deal for me because I love music, and yeah. so um, you know I, I I love music. I play piano, a little bit of the guitar, um, I sing a little bit, and so I, just nice. being able to have you know uh, the radio to be able to hear music, sure, you know, is 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 cool, and so. Uh, and not only that, but I like to enjoy listening to the people just talk, you know, and sometimes the people call in and it's funny and, 
and there's some interesting situations that are, arise in, in life. And so it's kind of cool and fun to hear and talk about that and, and to be able to have um, sure. that opportunity. Yeah. So this is a nice little segue into, you know, good mental health is, um, is music therapy something that Trilogy Health has ever incorporated or thought of incorporating as part of a... I, I've thought about it personally. Um, we haven't talked about it as a practice. Uh, I I certainly would think that music therapy would be awesome for 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 um, mental health uh, because it can definitely have a uh, profound effect. And so, um, you know, so I'll hear a song sometimes and it'll make my, you know, my the the hairs on my skin go yeah. up, you know, yep. you, you, you get that kind of weird feeling. And so sure. um, it, it makes you kind of feel good and brings happiness and joy and it releases endorphins and which in turns makes you happy. And that's the goal, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So Calvin, how are we doing on time here? I'm guessing it's four, yep, four minutes. And so with the time we have left, Jose, what would you like to tell us about Trilogy Health that we, we haven't talked about that you think our, our, our listeners should know? Yeah. So, you know, Come in, uh, meet us, and you know we're real laid back, uh, really cool, calm, and collected. Um, we're not your typical clinic where it's kind of you know very. I like to clinical, go out, very yeah. clinical. Yeah. Yeah. I like to go out and meet people and talk to them and, sure. and and meet the patients and engage with them and ask about their life. And if they're willing to share with me, that's awesome. But I want to know how it's going. I want to know how they're doing and how they're progressing. Uh, because if we don't know that that information, we can't help and. When we do know that, we can facilitate that. So, for sure. We're happy to be here. TrilogyHealthGroup.com. Check us out. And uh, and don't hesitate to come in. Don't hesitate because um, you never know what could happen. Sounds good. And you know, what did you say are the like the patients you deal with? What are some of the, the leading diagnoses that you're, you're having to confront or helping them confront? Yeah, depression, anxiety is huge. Um, you know, uh, schizophrenia, uh, ADHD. Bipolar disorder, you know, okay. uh, our, our clinicians are able to diagnose and treat all of that. So, sure. uh, and like I said, not only the general health, um, not only psychiatric mm. and psychotherapy, but also, sure. you know, the, the medical cosmetics okay. as well. Does your practice also treat children or youth? Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. Uh, youth all the way up to geriatric, uh, to geriatric care. So kids, uh, Anybody, anybody can come in and meet, and, and meet us and, and take part of our services. And and um, it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. Wow. Is, is there one age group in particular where you probably have the most um, cu- I, patients or customers? Uh, I think mainly adults typically. Okay. Um, but we are, I'm, I am starting to see a lot of parents be more concerned with their child's, men, with their child's mental health. And so we're, we are starting to see a lot of uh, kids come in with their parents and which is very great to see because, you know, what happens with these kids in school and the information they have access to, you know, they need some type of mental help for sure. Sure. Especially sure. my kids. Yeah. 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 That's interesting to know. Mm-hmm. So, well, and it's also fortunate you live real close to work. Do you, uh, do you ride your bike or walk? Or I walk. Just, Sometimes yeah. I wow. walk. Yeah. It's like a it is that five, close. 10 minute walk. Yeah. It's not far at all. It's like a minute drive. So, um, it's very cool to be really close to work and and sure. and make it there on time. And what are your hours? Yeah, we're open uh, eight a.m. to eight p.m. Monday through Friday, and then weekends uh, available upon, upon request. Uh, okay. And not only do we have in person visits, uh, but we also uh, can do virtual health care as well. Virtual uh, and remote care. Virtual remote care. That's and, and we can treat anybody in Wisconsin. So okay. Yeah. Do you guys do house calls? Uh, we have had uh, instances where we have gone out to um, patients' homes, um, and we certainly can accommodate that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, like I said, don't hesitate to call, especially when, when it has to deal, you know, with mental health. We'll help you right away. That is terrific. Yeah. Well, any any final thoughts we might have missed here? Just, you know, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, uh, to be able to talk about Trilogy Health Group and to have the shock kind of, facilitate that is, is an amazing thing for me. And I look forward to a, a, a partnership with you guys and, and, uh, and thank you for the opportunity to be able Terrific. to get the word out about Trilogy Health Group. Jesus Ramirez, Director of Operations for Trilogy Health Group. Thanks so much for joining us this morning for and, and for the success of your practice and thank you. for all that you're doing to promote uh, good mental health here in, 
in our Waukesha community and beyond. Thank you very much. Stick around for the second hour. We have Kelly Piazic and Brian May uh, from Rogers Behavioral Health. I called them Brian K. It's Brian May. And uh, so much more in this second hour. So uh, this week in Waukesha, WAUK, 540 AM, 101.1 FM, The Shaw. And don't forget the Civic Media app. Twenty-four. May the 4th be with you. Opening day of Farmer's Market. If it's 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, it's still time for This Week in Waukesha, hour number two. I am your host, the unsinkable Don Brown, coming to you live and local from the office of former Alderman Don Paul Brown here in the WAUK studios, right around the corner from Theodore Yaumans Park, where we are uh, proud to honor our suffragette heritage here in the Shaw. I am joined for the day, reunited, and it feels so good with my good friend uh, Calvin, who cut his teeth on this very show before being brought up in the show for you baseball fans, now doing some serious producing for the Earl Ingram show, Monday through Friday, 8 to 10. And then Matt and, I, Matt and Aaron here with Jane Matt and and Greg Bach, uh, 10 to 12. And so, again, we're honored to have uh, Calvin here, even if it is just for the day. Calvin, how you doing here now, number two? You, you, you hanging on? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm I'm used to it. All right. That's right. Yeah. You see, you're up early Monday through Friday. So this is day six for you. Really grateful for your extra efforts. And so, as I mentioned in the first hour, my guess, it, it is, May is Mental Health uh, Awareness Month. And in uh, past years, I've had um, Mary Madden, Executive Director for NAMI on. And uh, last night was a big fundraiser. So I thought I'd give Mary and the other the rest of the NAMI team the the morning off uh, to, I'm, I'm sure to get some well-deserved rest, but we do hope to have someone from NAMI here um, hopefully later on this month. But uh, in the meantime, I'm thrilled to have from Rogers Behavioral Health, uh, Dr. Kelly Piazek, Executive Vice President of Research. Did I get the title right, Kelly? Did, yeah, thank Fantastic. You. And I was wrong. It's Brian Kay. I was right the first time. <laughs> the Chief Strategy Officer, very cool title for Rogers Behavioral Health. Brian, my apologies and welcome. Thank you for having us. And I, because it is May and it is May the 4th be with you, I, I have an excuse. And I, Brian, I think it was a <laughs> hockey player named Brian May or an athlete that I knew. Hey, it works. So, it but, works. Uh, no, we're really glad you're here. And um, as I mentioned in the first hour, we are not taking any calls regarding uh, Kelly's role on the school board. She is here in her capacity representing Rogers Behavioral Health, which is, um, I, I wonder how many people really know this. It's one of the leading, if not maybe number one or two, um, mental and behavioral health uh, hospitals in America, if not the world. Is that is that a stretch, Kelly? It's not a stretch. Yeah. Brian and, can share some of the, the background. It's impressive. And Rogers has a, an amazing story throughout the years. So we're a relatively new organization. We've only been around since 1907. Yeah. Uh, so about 115 <laughs> years in the Waukesha community. And it started really as a health sanatorium out in Oconomowoc. So it's a staple sure. out there for years that's continually kind of transforming itself. And really in the last 10 years, Rogers has gone through an amazing expansion. So where we stand today, we've got 21 locations across 10 different states. Wow. As you referenced, uh, we are the largest non-for-profit, non-affiliated behavioral health organization in the United States. So in terms of scale, we see about 21,000 unique uh, patients that come through our doors every single year. Uh, so that's amazing. great scope. Great uh, amount of services that we provide, not only in Wisconsin, but also coast to coast. Sounds terrific. You know, and I wanted to, again, as I, I had that disclaimer earlier about no calls regarding school board, I wonder says, why this topic is so important. We want to focus on this topic. As I mentioned the first hour, there was data released from the Mental Health Association. There are 21% of adults experiencing a mental illness. That's equivalent to over 50 million Americans. Staggering. 50%, 55% of adults with a mental illness receive no treatment, which means over 28 million individuals. 
16% of youth report suffering from at least one major depressive episode in the past year. We have more than 2.7 million youth that are experiencing severe major depression. 60% of youth with major depression do not receive mental health treatment. One in 10 youth with private health insurance do not have mental health coverage. And there is one mental health provider for every 350 citizens. So you know, we have some gaps here. And um, the good news from this same report, it was a, an annual report for 2023, is that Wisconsin ranks number one in the nation with the lowest number of mental health cases and the highest access to care. So, I mean, that, that's amazing, and we can pat ourselves on the back. But only for the moment because that's not to say that there still aren't gaps here in this excuse me, in this state and even in our metro area for access to good mental health care. And I I think, is it safe to say, Kelly and Brian, a lot of that comes from stigma still surrounding mental health as well as um, anxieties people have about um, getting uh, good mental health treatment? I think there's no question that stigma continues to be one of the biggest barriers to people seeking treatment. Um, as Jesus mentioned earlier, in the, the partnership between Rogers and a lot of the local referral providers is really important, and, and that continuum didn't, didn't exist decades ago. So I think those, um, those pathways for people to seek care are becoming clear. They're easier to access. Um, in, insurance providers are covering more of those services, but there's no question that stigma continues to be the biggest challenge, you know, for, for any individual to raise sure. their hand and say, I actually need some help here. Yeah. And that's gotta be a good challenge for you or one even to get excited about as chief strategy officer. What are we doing to normalize mental health or depression or, or to kind of chip away at that stigma? I, I think you hit on it a little bit earlier is how are we creating access in multiple ways now that, you know, reduces stigma some of the ways that, you know, we're seeing out in the field and then what Rogers has also built is telehealth and using digital as a platform. So it's breaking down some of the physical barriers, the geographic barriers of accessing care. And, you know, at Rogers, we've done a really interesting play in terms of how we built our telehealth platform. Uh, so we've really, it, we've optimized the experience for group therapy on it. So you, even though you're in kind of a digital environment, you have the ability of connecting with people in a very user-centric way. Uh, so by providing tele out there, we're reaching so many more people than we ever been able to, breaking down the barriers to access, reducing stigma in that way. And then also when you come on to Rogers and look at our physical plant and our environments, they're beautiful. I mean, beautiful, non-stigmatizing facilities uh, where people can heal and recover in an environment that uh, is very calming and, and you know, a great place to heal. <laughs> Terrific. Did you want to add to that, Kelly? Um, well, Brian mentioned the facilities, and I think um, Rogers does a, just an incredible job of focusing on the interior design, the exterior design, home-like environment. Um, and, and we see that in the outcomes and, and the research data that we're looking at, too. We, we know that those environments, are they're not sterile environments. They're really about, um, you know, surrounding the person with, comfort and support and the resources that they need. So I, I feel very fortunate to work in the facilities that we do. Um, it, Waukesha County is just a beautiful place, uh, generally speaking, but um, surrounded by wildlife. and Yeah, it is a really pretty campus there, too, yeah. in Oconomowoc. And, uh, Calvin, how are we doing on time, sir? Okay, five minutes. Thank you, Calvin. And, uh, hey, just want to cut in real quick. Um. It's a very important election year, as many of us know. In fact, my guests on June 1st are um, candidates for the state assembly, challenging uh, Scott Allen, as well as a candidate for the state senate. And then on June 8th, um, incumbent Scott Allen comes in. And that's going to be a pretty interesting election, uh, that one in particular for the state assembly seat in what's now the 82nd district, because um, it's, I believe it's like 42% of the original base of Scott Allen's district has, has gone away. And so it should make for an interesting, uh, very interesting election. And again, very important why people need to get out and vote and support um, your candidates. And so you can go to vote.org. You can also sign up for an absentee ballot. And research has shown a 30% increase in participation with the absentee ballot. And if you haven't already, because there are many people that are retired that don't drive anymore, 
um, go get your, your voter ID, get that picture ID, whatever is required. Uh, take advantage of that now. Any, uh, any help with that, you know, call the city of Waukesha. The clerk's office is very proactive about that. They have a great team. And I know that from my own experience on the council. And then also, um, you can also reach me here at the office, of former alderman Don Paul Brown, very help, uh, very happy to help in that regard. And, um, Returning my conversation here with doctors uh, Kelly Piazek and Brian K. Not May, but it is May, so I'm sure you get a lot of jokes about that. Brian K. in the month of May, but um, you now, Kelly. You, as I understood, did you, you started kind of the research program? Is that right at Rogers? I did. I joined Rogers in January of 2020, right before a little okay. little thing yeah, before that, that little shutdown, yeah, that <laughs> little that uh, pick up in our uh, yep yep. Um, I was employee number one for the Rogers Research Center, and so the the ask was to establish that um, organization. We actually moved into a brand new facility in the fall of 2021. So the Ladishko Foundation generously helped Rogers establish a, a beautiful facility um, that that co-locates uh, the research center, the Ronald McDonald House family room, and then Rogers Spiritual Care Services. Um, it has just a beautiful uh, conference area and meeting space that is accessible to a lot of different groups around the area. So um, my department, which is about uh, 20 folks now, is in the garden level of the Laddish Oh, Foundation nice. Center. That's right. And, um, but we serve the entire system across the nation. We've got wow. About 50 research projects that are actively ongoing. Wow. It, and full disclosure, um, Ronald McDonald House is a client of mine, uh, but certainly very proud of the work that's being done at the family room. And, and being able to partner with Rogers, um, this is one of the first Ronald McDonald House um, chapters, if you will, in their global system to partner with a, a mental and behavioral health hospital. And so important work's being done. I was giving you national data here uh, earlier in the show and in the beginning of this hour, uh, but I can tell you from my own experiences that a lot of that local data, the local data is very consistent. And since Rod, Ronald McDonald House serves um, children ages birth to 21, you know, we've seen staggering rises in the number of families um, um, we're serving that are receiving treatment at Rogers Behavioral Health. So um, grateful that we have, we are top ranked in the state uh, or in the country, Wisconsin is in terms of, uh, uh, shall we say, quality of care and access to care. But so much work needs to be done. And of course, many of those families that are coming in, to Rogers, whether they stay around the McDonald House or not, they're from all over the nation and the world, correct? All, all over. I mean, so coming out into our Oconomowoc campus, we've got a level of care called residential. So residential is where people stay a little bit more long term, typically 30 to 60 days. Sure. Uh, and they kind of live on site. So of that level of care, close to 85% come out of state. Wow. Uh, and then we have people all got over it. the world as well, too. The conversation continues with Brian Kay and Kelly Piazic of Rogers Behavioral Health here on This Week in Waukesha on WUK, 540 AM, 101.1 FM, The Shaw. You're listening to This Week in Waukesha, and that is Talk to Me by Peter, Peter Gabriel. Uh, so many great songs he sings relating to uh, mental health. And um, that one, Digging in the Dirt's another one I was, I was thinking of playing. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm here with my esteemed guest, uh, Dr. Um, Kelly Piazek, Executive Vice President of Research at Rogers Behavioral Health, and her um, co-worker, Dr. Brian K, Chief Strategy Officer. And um, off air, Brian, if you could repeat some of that data you were mentioning about, uh, well, before we uh, went uh, went to commercial, you were talking 85% of the Rogers patients are from out of state. 
And then I think you mentioned there's 21,000 patients that go through our, our system every single year. So we've got, tw- is that just the Oconomowoc campus or is that nationally? That's nationally. Okay. And, uh, you know, the Oconomowoc campus is actually a hub internationally as well too. So we sure. see patients from Europe, from South America, from, uh, Asia. It's an amazing place that people are, are coming in to seek care and services. Neat. And then, um, what else are we talking about? I think we we're talking, oh, we we're talking about like, um, what is the average time in the state of Wisconsin, again, considered number one in the nation for access to care? What was the average waiting time to see a, a, a therapist? Yeah, average waiting time to see a provider or a psychiatrist for like medication management or a psychiatric eval is 60 days in the state of Wisconsin. Despite us leading access to care, if someone wants to seek a provider, it's typically around 60 days. Rogers, we're trying to help reduce that time. So we've just opened up in the last few months outpatient services uh, in our West West Dallas campus. So Terrific. we've got the ability of if someone needs medication management or see a psychiatrist, uh, those appointments are available. But even despite great access in the state of Wisconsin, it's still a lengthy amount of time to see someone. Sure. And that has to be troubling because I think when someone's at that point where they finally recognize they need help, it is usually Maybe not an emergency situation, but certainly an urgent situation. Is that fair to say? Fair to say. And, you know, there's many levels of care that could help with those urgent situations. Like exactly what you're saying. If someone saw an outpatient a psychiatrist or we offer levels of partial hospitalization or intensive outpatient, which is more of that day treatment setting. So there's a lot of different access points to utilize. Uh, it's just getting into the system and, you know, reaching out and letting know that you, you do need help. Terrific. Well, and I, I think in lieu of that waiting time, I know, again, from my time in the council that our police, our fire and paramedics are all trained in dealing with some of these situations that involved a uh, potential suicidal situation in terms of counseling and lay counseling, to be fair, and um, giving life saving treatment. And um, is does Rogers interface with those different like first responders in terms of that kind of training? Yeah. So we, Rogers, we work with our first responders, police departments very closely in terms of how do they get access into our care, into our system. Uh, we've also provided over the years certain trainings in terms of just basic principles of who would need a particular level of care. But we've got close partnerships uh, with those those individuals. And and don't don't forget the fact that they also need support. And services, the the experience right. that a lot of our first responders are, are yep. seeing on the job. Um, we've had now a four-year partnership through our research center with the Professional Firefighters of Wisconsin Charitable nice. Foundation. So Terrific. we are actually working with them also to understand some of the needs of their members. I'm really glad you mentioned that, Kelly, because my guest a couple weeks back was outgoing Fire Chief Steve Howard and Assistant Fire Chief Joe Howard. And, and Steve's last day was May 1st. They had a really nice uh, celebration for him. And uh, congratulations to Steve on 36 years of faithful service to the city of Waukesha and to, um, to yeah, just to our, our, our community. And really enjoy your retirement. And I know his uh, his former next-door neighbor, uh, Alfred Gorham, who is uh, Wisconsin's only Tuskegee Airman, would be extremely proud of uh, the life he's led. So uh, congrats again to uh, Steve. And so, yeah, so we have firefighters, first responders, uh, I imagine there's other types of professions too, where you're, you're dealing with, um, you know, I guess violent situations or high, uh, high level stress situations that I imagine are part of the customer base or people you want to be more proactive about, uh, reaching out to. Any frontline support professionals, you know, right. um, nursing physicians, um, you know, even, even folks serving in the, the mental health, um, services capacity, um, educators, you know, there, there's just a lot that folks who are acting or active all day working with and supporting others that, um, we sometimes forget about their personal yeah. needs. Right. And sure. you know, mental health affects everybody mm-hmm. in that sense. So it affects all professions and, you know, Rogers has treated over the years, many, many different groups. We've had impaired professional programs. We actually treated clergy, uh, in the 1980s. So, you know, it's, it's, we found ways of treating everybody. Terrific. Calvin, how are we doing on time, my friend? Okay, about three minutes. Hey, I just want to cut in real quick. Uh, congratulations um, to Waukesha North staff members celebrating a milestone anniversary with the school district of Waukesha. That's Sandra Vondrak and Brian Schley. 
uh, again, celebrating 15 years with the district. Congrats to them. And um, how many years have you been with uh, Rogers, Brian? I've been with Rogers for uh, 12 years, all in all. I actually started at Rogers providing treatment uh, in our residential facilities and just had the opportunity to see it grow throughout the years. And, you know, it's been a pleasure working with Kelly on the research side and sure. some of the things that we're doing from the data piece uh, and how we're looking at our treatments and quantifying it and applying artificial intelligence is pretty cutting edge uh, in terms of how we're helping out the quality of care and reduce the burden for our staff members. You know, you hear AI everywhere, and it certainly is an interesting wrinkle um, in mental and behavioral health. You know, I'd love to, um, that if you have a moment to maybe dig a little deeper on that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, AI, you could apply it in many different a- aspects. And the stance we've always taken is AI is not going to replace a clinician. Uh, you know, humans are humans, and, you know, we do clinical care human to human. But is AI a great tool of being able to augment our clinicians, either to reduce some of the tasks that a lot that they may be taken away from interacting with patients or see things that they haven't been able to see uh, in case conceptualization or formulation. So we have a- AI really in two different places. One, how are we using it to affect better clinical care? So making treatment plans and interventions a little bit more personalized and targeted. And then the other piece is how are we using AI to reduce documentation burden? So that might be ambient listening of ensuring that we capture conversations and distill it down uh, or ensuring that we have the proper information in our notes. Interesting. So it also brings a lot of efficiencies anyway, too. It's oftentimes a very... It, exactly. And, you know, the efficiency piece is really how do you get the the tasks or the items off of individuals' plates that reduce their ability to interact with the patient in that way. So we formulated around that, that our clinicians could reach the top of their license uh, and work with people. Sounds great. Calvin, how are we doing time? Okay. Conversation continues with Brian Kay and Kelly Piazic of Rogers Behavioral Health. But first, want to congratulate uh, May 4th was, the I believe, the third signing day for Waukesha North athletes. Uh, Isabel Nowak uh, going to lacrosse for softball. Elijah Mead going to St. Thomas for football. Hannah Michaels to Rippon for volleyball. Jaden Miles Wabanzi for basketball. Julian Hernandez, Whitewater for football. And uh, we'll continue with the rest of this list here on This Week in Waukesha, WUK, 540 AM, 101.1 FM, The Shaw. And don't forget to download the Civic Media app if you haven't already. You're listening this week in Waukesha with your host Don Brown and my good friend uh, Calvin on the board, and that was Elvis Costello with Radio Radio. And um, it's a question I'm going to ask my guests uh, Kelly Piazek and Brian K of Rogers Behavioral Health what radio is meant to them. But first, want to finish that list of signees from Waukesha North student athletes, and uh, that's Joshua Noonan who's going to lacrosse for football, not for golf, but for football. Joshua Noonan, for any of you Caddyshack fans. Jacob Knowles going to Ripon for football. Emma Knowles going to Southwest Minnesota State for diving. Julianne Ludke is going to UW Lacrosse for diving. And Julia Gattel is going to UW Lacrosse for dance. And uh, Kelly, who's walked on North, North Mom, has informed me that um, that's only the partial list. There were uh, their, their previous signing days. And I know one of them uh, is, is part of your family, right? Yes. Uh, uh, I've actually had the honor of watching all these kids grow up all the way from elementary school. So, so proud to see all of them going off to college and play. And sure. um, they did a signing day in February, too. Um, my oldest is going to be playing golf in college, so we're excited about Sure. That. Can I ask where at? He's going to Hillsdale College. Hillsdale, that's right, in Michigan, yes. Yeah. Yep. Excellent school. I, I know that being a, a Spartan. Yeah. So, congratulations. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Proud of all of them. And also wanted to mention uh, this week, Waukesha South's Health and Engineering Academies had their signing day on Wednesday night. Um, that, that's a big deal. I, I like that, you know, for eighth graders, there's a signing day to go on to these really, um, these wonderful academies that are part of the Waukesha School District and are housed at Waukesha South. And, and one of mine will be entering the Engineering Academy. So uh, very proud of, of her and of, of all these, uh, these children becoming young adults um, as they start their, uh, their high school career. And I also want to give a shout out to a young man named uh, uh, Evan Ben Dixon, who I first met in the Blazer program. Um, uh, Evan's one of the catchers in the Waukesha South baseball team, but he's also a um, talented musician, and he has a band called the Nunchucks. And they organized a music festival last night, a punk rock music festival, if you will, Anarchy in the WAUK. And uh, it was at Waukesha South last night, and it was called Shaw Stock. And uh, the Nunchucks were the opening act. I got to catch them. It was a lot of fun to see. And, um, the proceeds from that event went to the Jackson Sparks Foundation, so I thought that was wonderful, and it was really well attended. A lot of fun. there was actually a mosh pit in the high school auditorium, <laughs> so uh, uh, congrats! And uh, the Nunchucks, uh, as of right now, are my guests on June fifteenth, uh, which is my birthday. You know, we were supposed to have them on a few weeks back, uh, but unfortunately, there was a um, a postponement that we had to uh, uh, we had we had to postpone them. So, but. Um, Returning with our, our conversation here with my, my good friends from Rogers Behavioral Health, uh, Dr. Brian Kay, Chief Strategy Officer, and Dr. Kelly Piazek, Executive Vice President of Research, who started the research program at Rogers. And um, Kelly, I want to give you the floor because I, I imagine there's so many topics, things I'm missing. And my focus may be because my own experience is dealing with depression, but there's all these other um, issues that a lot of your patients are dealing with, sometimes multiple issues. Yeah, so. yeah we do see complex patients, lots of um different presentations and diagnoses that we're, we're working through. Um, and I, from it, so I'm an engineer by training, so I'm excited to hear your daughter's going to the engineering <laughs> Academy right. and uh, very, very proud of those programs and um, love to see young women choosing engineering as a career path or a career option. Um, but, but I started in product development and uh, functional imaging. So wow. really on the, the medical technology development, device development, and, and got into research because I was really interested in, in getting products to market. Wow. And the more time that I spent in research, I spent a lot of time in oncology and cardiology. And what what um, you don't see is how the, the neuroscience doesn't necessarily translate to the mental health space. And that's some of the motivation behind why we're doing what we're doing with the Rogers Research Center is how do you bring... Um, physiology and biology and neuroscience into mental health. And so there's a, a tremendous amount of opportunity. The mental health space, I would argue, is probably a couple decades behind where some of the more traditional medicine is. Um, so as Brian was talking about artificial intelligence, I think you have to have intelligence in order to have artificial intelligence. And so one, one of the <laughs> right. things, you know, you have to start somewhere. Sure. Um, one of the things that Rogers is really, really a leader in is measurement-based care and has been doing it for over a decade um, and a lot of that is attributed to to Brian and some of the work that he did to lay the groundwork to collect information. There are clinically validated assessments that can quantify the symptoms associated with various mental health diagnoses. And so Rogers does that on a very rigorous and prescribed um, schedule. So at admissions and and at, at least every every two weeks while patients are in treatment with us and then at, at discharge. So we have a wealth of data. We have, I think we assess, assess over a, milli, a billion, I'm sorry, data points associated with patient treatments wow. that now we can utilize to build algorithms, predictive models, and really understand what, what does um, a patient experience and how do those symptoms change over the course of treatment. So from a research perspective, the, the three things that you really need to have to conduct great research are you need to have a controlled environment so you can test things. You need to have a large sample size, which Rogers does, as Brian right. mentioned. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and then um, you need to have a reliable measurement system. And so we have that. And so Rogers was really uniquely positioned to be exceptional at research. And so some of the things that we've brought in are looking at um, what do we know about a patient's genetics in terms of how they might respond to treatment, how they might respond to certain medications. The field of oncology has been ahead of the game with genetic testing for, for quite some time. And so we're working on how can we bring some of that actually into the psychiatric space as well. And, and then um, the neuroscience piece is all the, the, the activity that's happening in our brains, right? Our brains are basically just a bag of water with a bunch of electricity flowing through it. And so... Um, Sounds like my brain. <laughs> um, we know a lot about um, those brain waves 
and we can measure them and we can stimulate them. And there's a lot that can be done to, to complement some of the, um, uh, the, the therapy that's being delivered. And so really comprehensively looking at all of those pieces. And, you know, Jesus even mentioned a lot of new interventions that, that people are experimenting with yeah. in terms of brain stimulation and things. So. And for those of you tuning in, Kelly's referring to Jesus Ramirez, uh, Director of Operations of at Trilogy Health Group here in Waukesha, in the same building as uh, the new building is for the NAMI uh, headquarters. And so it's, it's great that a lot of these great um, care facilities are in that same building as NAMI. And, and uh, it was wonderful having Jesus and talking about his uh, the unique uh, practice that he runs uh, here in Waukesha. Yeah. And he talked about um, TMS, which is transcranial magnetic stimulation. There's, there's just a lot of different technologies available for different ways of delivering um, different levels of energy to the brain to try to um, modify or influence how some of the, the neurons in the electricity are firing within the brain. So those are all part of our research programs and, and clinical programs as well. That's a, Brian can comment. That's a technology that's available on the market today. And okay. we're offering TMS in our West Dallas clinics uh, as well as our Oconomowoc clinics. But as Kelly said, you know, it's a great strategy to augment uh, treatment in many ways and, you know, blending what is the science with what is kind of best of breed and providing the best possible care. In the clinical research world, a lot of times you'll see a, a product will come to market and it'll have a very specific indication for use. So TMS was first launched with an indication for depression. and So a lot of the research that we continue to do is understanding what are the other indications that might actually be able to, ser to be served by the technology. How might you use it differently? What different areas of the brain could you target with okay. the same kind of technology? Interesting. And for a lot of our listeners, I'm wondering, is does Rogers or do you, uh, per, are there recommendations for best practices that um, the average citizen can be engaged in that um, improves their mental health or helps them maybe identify if they have a mental health, health crisis? I know so many of us are in denial about uh, a lot of our mental and behavioral health issues and addiction issues. I, I think the best pra best practices out there is reach out when you're struggling as well, too. You know, as we were kind of talking a little bit off air is, you know, no one should be isolated to themselves. We're lucky that we are in an area in Wisconsin that has a lot of treatment. If you're struggling, if you're uh, feeling down, if you're having symptoms consistent with, you know, mental health issues, reach out to outpatient provider, reach out to Rogers, reach out to care providers uh, to get that help. You know, what you see in mental health is the evidence base is continuing to grow. And what we have done at Rogers is we have infused our treatment with the best evidence-based uh, practices that there is. And typically, they're very simple fundamentals using cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, but, you know, it a lot of times it does take, you know, interacting with someone to teach you to practice to get those skills uh, integrated into your daily routines. Interesting. And now you mentioned, Brian, too, is that we've got – a lot of physical access. There's a lot of great um, care, you know, clinics, practices, um, organizations, facilities, whatever you want to call it. But then the average person reaches into the wallet and they, they check their insurance and they call and they, they find out they're, they're not covered. As, you know, some of the data I release is that that's, that is still an issue locally. It's getting better. I mean, when mental health parity uh, went into effect a few years ago, that has reduced that wall and that barrier. And, you know, with the pandemic, you're seeing such high rates of mental health and illness. Every day we're seeing it better and better and better to get uh, coverage out there. So many of those barriers have been decreasing throughout the years. Sounds and good. there's great resources out there uh, as well, too. You mentioned NAMI. Uh, there's just many, many areas that, that you could leverage in terms of that skill building and getting access to the right care. Terrific. And speaking of good mental health coverage this morning, we're, we're grateful to have here in the office of former Alderman Don Paul Brown, uh, James Santel, whose show Atticus, a law review is next. Jim does not, is not a therapist, does not work in the mm -hmm. behavioral health space, but he's, he's graced us with these uh, morning cannolis, the name, the previous name of his show uh, from Gloriosos on Brady street, I believe. Yep. Thumbs up. Thank you, Jim. And uh, always, always honored to have you here and looking forward to your show at nine o'clock uh, covering the, the latest legal issues of the day. And uh, thanks uh, on behalf of my guests, too. It's always great when we can grace them with uh, with your presence and these uh, tasty treats that get us in a good mood uh, on this beautiful sunny day, by the way. So, And then um, don't forget, opening day for Farmer's Market. So uh, will, you, will either of you be heading over there after the show, or, or have you already been there? 
I have a long day following my kids around on the golf course today, so I probably I won't make it. Yeah, but, uh, he's on the links. Huh? Yeah, now I'll be at Frame <laughs> Park at uh, what, South as a doubleheader against McGuanago, and um, I'll be uh, I'll be calling the second game. So, and I'm going to be heading but, over. So I've got a uh, barely one year old, so she turns one in about two weeks. Nice. Uh, so oh, so we'll you'll be heading to the farmers market. It's going to be her first farmers market experience. Wow, so. that's right. Get some pictures. <laughs> yeah. That's, it reminds me, you know, since the Brewers play at Wrigley Field tomorrow against Craig Council's Cubs, I was uh, I, I got tickets from a, one of our vendors to a uh, years ago in another life. It was a Cubs Red Sox game, the first game at Wrigley since those two teams faced each other years ago in the World Series, and uh, a woman from Boston brought her ten day old baby uh, in a car across country to Wrigley Field to be part of this. <laughs> Historic moment, and of course it was blazing hot. So she she hung out in those, you know, those kind of those little, little like kind of ramps when you're going down, out into the concessions of the restroom windows. There was a huge wind tunnel going through to keep them cool. So, but <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. So, uh, Cowboy got thirty oh, two minutes. Okay, fantastic. So, um, returning to the discussion back on, on behavioral health. Yeah, we mentioned the farmers market is um, nutrition also probably has to be a part of the work that you're doing in, in research and strategy. Is that fair to say? Nutrition is a big part of mental health. We're learning a lot more about how the, um, the how gut health affects brain health, so the, the gut-brain connection um, and the microbiota in, um, in the gut. And so a lot of research in that area. Um, there are a lot of conditions that, you know, from a genetics perspective, we can understand a little bit better um, that's, you know, Perhaps certain people may respond differently to things like a keto diet or, or different types of nutritional um, strategies, but lots still to learn in that space. But uh, sure, it's 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 bigger than I think any of us. Yeah, absolutely. Would imagine. Yeah. Sure. Now I used to do a lot of writing for a healthcare client, and their customer base were type two diabetes patients, and a lot of it was on just nutrition and excuse me, simply two cups of vegetables or no two cups of fruit, two and a half cups of vegetables every day. And just really one of the not so well known. I mean, it's one of the secrets to good living, and I imagine that's got to also impact uh, behavioral health. So, but the conversation continues with Kelly Piazic and Brian K of Rogers Behavioral Health here in this beautiful Saturday morning on this week in Waukesha. And don't forget to download uh, the app so you can go to the farmers market and catch the rest of the show here. You're listening to this week in Waukesha and uh, a double entendre on this beautiful sunny morning with uh, the Beatles uh, this week in Waukesha with George Harrison in the lead vocal spot. And it's also a special event at Let It Be Nightclub, the Beatles themed nightclub. We had a a guest from their their consulting team uh, here a few weeks back. And uh, tonight they have a special concert, a fundraising event. Proceeds go to the Parade Memorial Fund, and it's um, the esteemed Beatles cover band, American English. Doors open at 6.30. I believe the show starts at 7. $250 a seat, and there are still a few seats remaining, and uh, they are um, they are taking guests at the door if you decide at the last second. Um, so I know there will be quite a few people there, or people I know like Mayor Sean Riley will be there, and um, I... You know, depending on my schedule and, uh, and, <laughs> and what's in my account. No, uh, but no, I, I was a huge Beatles fan as a kid and, and excited to see things starting to happen there. It's been long awaited. Uh, it hasn't formally opened yet, but at least people get a sneak peek. Um, I, I got to take a tour a few weeks back. It, it's really beautiful. And um, in the previous segment, we forgot to I forgot to ask my guest. Um, we had the, the walkout song, uh, Radio Radio by Elvis Costello. And I wanted to ask, what has radio meant in your lives? 
Brian, you want to go first? Because sure. you said you had a pretty unique uh, understanding. <laughs> so and- radio, for me, brings back a ton of memories. Uh, so first off, just listening to classical music on the radio all the way th- uh, as a kid. Yeah. But, you know, radio holds a kind of a little bit of a special meaning to me. My father yeah. is a retired pilot for 34 years. So radio always brought the connection uh, in terms of where he would be. But also, you know, all the dialogue and ontologies yeah. that uh, pilots have with it. So when he retired going out with O'Hare, how he was uh, navigating that sure. that airport with Lakeshore Drive and yeah. all of these different interesting. So radio brings back a lot of memories. Very neat. How about you, Kelly? I think it's just maybe a sign of the times. It reminds me how old I am, unfortunately, because <laughs> when, I you started, both. Oh, when I started driving, um, I had inherited this old clunker car that had an 8-track player, and I didn't have any 8-track. So I just, I just remember always having to listen to the radio and now it's like i want to listen to the radio i'm battling the kids like i don't want to listen to to your spotify or whatever i want to actually listen to like something that's live so um but i was the kid that had like the 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 disc man with the cassette adapter that went into the eight track adapter that went into you know so i had all the the connections nice um but it was way too much work so now now i just kind of prefer to hear whatever's happening you know locally so much so much better yeah. Hey, and I have to ask, since you're from Rogers, you know, I remember for years there was Dr. Ruth. I don't think she's on anymore, but is there, are there any good kind of radio programming addressing uh, mental behavioral health that you know of or would recommend or uh, even on Spotify? I know some podcasts. So, you know, I, I think one of great one out there is Brene Brown Oh uh, yes, in yep. terms of, Life's you know, how she's lo- looking at in that side of things. There's a great amount of podcasts out there that are looking at mental health, but radio specifically, nah, None is jogging my, my mind right now. That's okay. pod, podcast kind of ruin the radio. Yeah, I, I could, know. could be a programming <laughs> opportunity for civic media. Calvin, are you taking notes? So, but um, what you know, with the, in the short time we have left, what what would you like to share about Rogers that we haven't talked about already? Uh, and I, I guess before you start too, is because I've been focusing on mental health. What are some of the other ailment or issues out there that maybe among your biggest you know patient base? So, or maybe aren't getting enough attention. Rogers, we're very fortunate. We've got a large scope of services. So we treat obsessive compulsive disorder, eating disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression and mood, substance use uh, with what is coined dual diagnosis. So with a mood disorder or with a comorbid diagnosis, sure. emotional dysregulation. And one of the different treatment arms that we're getting into is what we're kind of coining primary behavioral health. So Think of when you go into your primary care doctor. It's a way of evaluating. It's a way of understanding where do you need to make change and integrating those changes. So our primary behavioral health treatment is really focusing on behavior change and uh, really opening the doors to many, many different diagnoses. Uh, So that's part of the area that Rogers is going is how are we continuing to open up access, uh, not only from a physical plant location, but from our telehealth, our digital side of things, and then having our treatment strategies as being as general and broad as possible. So if people are struggling, they've got the ability to come into our doors and get that high high quality care Rogers is known for. Sounds great. How about you, Kelly? And I think just the focus on innovation. I mean, the, the research center is is there because the vision was to continue to innovate. And while Rogers has been around for a really long time, um, the strategic priorities and the plans going forward are to continue to bring in um, new knowledge about technology and neuroscience and genetics and really just ad- advance mental health care like we're, we're accustomed to seeing other areas of health care sure. being advanced. So and so, it is fair to say, Rogers and your team, you're you're, you're essentially leading the, the mental health care market. If you, in terms of your best practices and a lot of your developments, is that fair to say? We agree. We agree. <laughs> yeah. right. I love that. It, it you know, I, I would wonder like how um, what what's the best? People just go to the the website like locally to learn more about Rogers. Is that you should- so rogersbh.org is our website. So you've got the ability to learn about all of our different treatments. Rogersbh.com. Okay. Uh, and then there's also the ability, if you are struggling, to request a screen on there. And then if things are more of acute needs, uh, our admissions line is 1-800-767-4411. Uh, so Could you repeat that, Brian? 1-800-767-4411. I love that. And I like the fact that people can go online to get a screening. I, I highly recommend that for those of you that are, if confidentiality is still important. Unfortunately, with the stigmas, that's still an issue that, you know, it can't hurt. And I imagine that's very secure and confidential. Very secure. Yep. 
So I'm really, I'm really glad we got to, to mention that. So, um, any other last second thoughts or tips, um, on this beautiful Saturday? Just thanks for having us. It's, um, it's so exciting to talk about the work that we're doing and, um, kind of get into the technology and, yeah. and things and that, and know that that's helping people. So the more that we can share that, the better. And echoing, uh, Kelly, just thank you for having us in allowing us to share the story at Rogers. As you mentioned, it's a unique place that's been here in Waukesha for 115 plus years, and it's continuing to grow and offer great treatment. So thank, thank you for you letting so us much. Show, share a story. Dr. Brian K., Dr. Kelly Piazic, Rogers Behavioral Health. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, promoting Mental Health Awareness Month. Don't forget Mother's Day is next weekend. We got the farmer's market today. Atticus with James Santel is next. Please remember, safety is everyone's responsibility, and good mental health is everybody's right and obligation. Thank you again. Go to Mila Mahagov. Have a beautiful Saturday. It's all right.